My name's Dave Smith. I'm a, I'm a trade unionist. Uh, my background is in the construction industry. I was a building worker and I was a shop steward and a safety rep for my union, which was UCAT, uh, the, the Union of Construction and Allied Trade Technicians, uh, in the 1990s. And I've been spied on by undercover police units today. I know this for a fact because every citizen in the UK is entitled to write to the police and ask for a copy of your police file. I've written, it's called a subject access request. I've written for a copy of my police file from the Metropolitan Police, asking for all of the police uh, files that they hold on me, not just from the Met Police, but from Special Branch and the Special Demonstration Squad and all of these various undercover police units. And the response I got back from them is that they're refusing to give me my police file. And the reason that they're refusing to give me my police file is it could undermine <coughs> ongoing uh, covert <coughs> operations. Um, in, in the last few weeks, an investigative journalist, I'm, I'm currently I'm, I'm blacklisted. The reason I'm being spied on is because I was, as a trade unionist, I was on a secret illegal blacklist called the Consultant Association Blacklist that existed in the construction industry where they, uh, uh, the, all of the big multinational companies use this blacklist to keep trade union activists off of their building sites. Um, and since that was exposed in 2009, there's now a campaign against it. The campaign is called uh, the Blacklist Support Group. It's run by all of the, the blacklisted workers. Um, and in the last couple of weeks, an investigative journalist has put in uh, a series of um, freedom of information requests uh, to uh, the Metropolitan Police, to the Essex Police, and all loads of police. Uh, forces across the country asking whether the Blacklist Support Group is currently being spied on by the police and from every single one of them the response is we can neither confirm nor deny whether the Blacklist Support Group is being spied on and the reason we cannot is because of national security and it would endanger uh, current operatives <coughs> with ongoing uh, crime detection. Now, um, the, the, when the blacklisting first came out um, we always thought this was going on. When it first came out, it was discovered in 2009, the Information Commissioner's Office, a government department, did a raid of some offices in the Midlands by this small little shady organisation that no one had heard of called the Consultant Association. And when they got there, they found these files, individual files, kept on 3,213 workers from the construction industry. And on the file, it had your name, address, national insurance number, telephone number, photographs of you, um, and virtually every one of them is because they're a trade union member. Um, my file is 36 pages long. It's got, my every, it's got every job I worked on for a 10-year period. When I was elected as a safety rep for my union and I sent and my union sent my credentials through to the company which is normally meant to give you certain rights uh, and facilities instead the company photocopied the credentials and added that to my blacklist file so just for being elected as a safety rep was enough to get you blacklisted in the building industry um, it's got stuff about my wife it's got stuff about my brother um, it's got every, it's got my car registration number, um, it's got, you know, when I complained about the toilets overflowing on one site, that was written in there. Uh, when I complained about asbestos on another site, that was written in there. Um, on one site, and this is the bit I'm really offended by, one of the managers wrote up something about me saying, uh, described as small and talking like a young Alf Garnet. <laughs> <laughs> which I'm particularly offended by, <laughs> more, more than anything else. And the point is that the people who were doing this were not small little fly-by-night building firms. They're the biggest multinational construction firms in the UK and in some cases in the world. We're talking about Sir Robert McAlpine Limited. They built the Olympic Stadium. We're talking about Skanskas, the uh, Swedish multinational, Costains, Balfour Beatty, you know, Carillion, all of the huge multinationals. And the, they, as well as having this thing, they used to attend meetings. The only people who were allowed to attend the meetings were at director level. The person who attended the meetings for Sir Robert McAlpine Limited is Cullum McAlpine. He owns the company. 
Sir Robert McAlpine Limited, he's an actual member of the bourgeois. You know, he's not a manager, he actually owns this organisation and he's turning up and the people who are having these meetings uh, talking about stopping me and other trade unionists getting uh, on their building sites. And if all they did was kept a file on you, it wouldn't be that bad. But they didn't just keep a file. Every time anyone applied for a job, they used to check to see if your name was on the list. And they charged, you know, every time you checked to see if a name was on the list, they used to charge two pounds. And when the thing was closed down in 2009, which was when the, uh, the Olympics was mid-flow, um, Skanskers, uh, and Sir Robert McAlpine, their invoices for that year, £28,000 each. This is industrial scale blacklisting of anyone who's a union activist or uh, who's likely to put their profits at risk by asking, heaven forbid, that we should have uh, a toilet that doesn't overflow or that we should actually you know, dispose of asbestos properly rather than just chucking it in a skip uh, uh, and dumping it. Uh, we know all this fact because the files have been seized and there's been a select committee investigation into it. But when the files came out, um, if you listen to the manager, if you listen to the directors of the companies who've been dragged in to give evidence to, to Parliament, or if you listen to their witness statements when they're in court, they've always said all the information came from managers on a building site. A manager on a building site would I would go in and complain about the toilets overflowing, that manager on a building site would send it up to the head office and the head office via the director would send it on to the, uh, this uh, secret uh, blacklist. Um, but when you looked at some of the files, it was so obvious that the stuff wasn't coming from a manager on a building site. There's people in this room who are on that blacklist uh, and the reason, and what it's written on their blacklist is, was observed during an anti-BMP demonstration when the BMP were laying a reef at the cenotaph. Now you tell me how any manager on a building site is walking past and just happens to notice that, you know? Um, and there's loads of stuff to do with people doing anti-racist activity and absolutely, without any shadow of doubt, there's personal stuff on there. Um, uh, and it's so obvious this isn't from a manager on a building site. It's so obvious that it's from a copper. Paul Lewis and Rob Evans, uh, from the Guardian exposed all of this stuff, uh, very much to do with what Helen and what uh, uh, America had done, put it in, in a book and exposed it all in the Guardian. We realised that one of these was an undercover copper. Um, and, the, and in fact, when we started digging, it's not one undercover copper, it's a series of undercover coppers. Um, uh, Peter Francis. Peter Francis, the one from the Special Demonstration Squad who was undercover for a number of years. He was spying on an anti-racist group called Youth Against Racism in Europe. He's also the, he's also the undercover police officer who has been on the TV saying that he was sent in to uh, spy on the Lawrence family and get smears on the Lawrence family and that sort of stuff. Peter Francis has admitted that he was spying on people uh, who were on this blacklist. We've shown him the blacklist files. In fact, Rob Evans from The Guardian has shown him the blacklist files. And Peter Francis says that information was provided by me and put on the special branch database. That has now somehow got from the special branch database onto a construction industry blacklist. Um, on one of the blacklist files, it actually says that this individual worker is under constant watch officially and considered to be politically dangerous. Rob, uh, uh, Peter Francis has said, I personally wrote that on the man's, on his, on his special branch file. And that now appears on this construction industry blacklist. Um, we later found out that, uh, that another undercover police officer, his name was Mark Jenner, he, his, his cover story uh, in the late 1990s when he was spying on people in North London um, was that he was a builder. Um, and he spied on people in North London, in the Colin Roach Centre, if anyone remembers the Colin Roach Centre uh, in, in Hackney. Um, he was involved in a number of, because his cover story was a builder, he used to turn up on our picket lines. Not only did he turn up on our picket lines, he chaired some of our meetings back in the 1990s. This is an undercover copper chairing some of our meetings. And you see some of the people's blacklist files at the same time that he was chairing the meetings, no, well, I've seen the blacklist files and it says uh, at the exact same time that this undercover copper was at the same meetings with these individuals, a bloke called Brian Higgins, 
was uh, uh, leader of one of the rank and file groups back in the day. Brian Higgins file, known associates of Brian Higgins, and then the whole two pages are completely redacted. You know, at exactly the same time that this undercover copy there is, is, is chairing the meetings. Not these, and we've, this undercover copy was another one of these, Mark Jenner, who had a long-term relationship uh, with a woman, uh, and when he left, he left, he left his diary there. We've got his diary, and page after page is him attending union meetings. He's turning up at union meetings to spy out people at trade union meetings. Um, he was at the JJ Fast Foods dispute, if anyone remembers that, over in uh, Tottenham Hall before, and loads of other disputes on building sites. During the peace process uh, in Northern Ireland, uh, the Colin Roach Centre took a trade union delegation over to the peace process. One of the workers who went over there was Steve Headley, who is now the uh, uh, Assistant General Secretary of the RMT. Mark Jenner went with him and stayed at Steve Headley's mum's house, you know, when they went over there to, to visit. This is just, you know, to, to say it's rotten is nothing. We have put in a complaint, the Blackley Support Group have put in a complaint to the IPCC to say, this is out of order, we want, the, you know, the links between undercover police units and uh, the blacklisting uh, uh, organisation, we want it looked into. Within weeks, the IPCC sent us back a response saying, from our initial investigations, it's clear that every single special branch in the country <laughs> routinely supplied information about prospective employees. Routinely supplied it. Um, but then the police have set up, you know, the police have set up uh, a, an inquiry about undercover policing called Operation Hearn. A number of you will probably have heard about Operation Hearn. It's looking into the allegations that uh, Peter Francis, the, the whistleblower copper, uh, has done. Operation Hearn has, has produced an interim report in which they've said blacklisting didn't exist, the police were not involved with blacklisting whatsoever, and uh, if there was any uh, exchange of information between the, uh, big business and the police, it was purely from the companies to the police, and it was done because of a sense of civic duty. That's the actual quote, uh, civic duty, in the thing. Well, it's funny, that civic duty stuff, and it has never existed, because last week in Parliament, John MacDonald named an undercover police officer who not only might have had something to do with blacklisting, he attended the meetings. His name is Detective Chief Inspector Golden Mills, is from the undercover police unit NETCO, which is the National Extremism Co uh, Tactical Coordination Unit, and his entire job of NETCO is to spy on what they consider domestic extremists and supply information about domestic extremists to industry. So now the people who are domestic extremists in this country are trade unionists. You know, so we, we know who these people are. Well, it's not some conspiracy theory, like we've been told we're all paranoid, it's a big conspiracy theory, we know who these coppers are. The head of the entire British police spying network, above Special Branch, above the Special Demonstration Unit, above uh, NETCO, was a, an Assistant Chief Constable, Anton Satchel. He was the head of spying when all of this stuff was exposed between 2004 and 2010. When he resigned in 2010, he's now the head of global security for Lang O'Rourke's, one of the big blacklisting firms that's in the High Court for provenly blacklisting construction workers. This is no, blacklisting is no longer just an industrial relations issue. It's a human rights conspiracy between big business and the state and the special branch and the police and MI5. Uh, the British press is great about saying, you know, if there's a dissident in China or somewhere around the world, they will talk about secret political police spying on dissidents. Well, we have secret political police who spy on dissidents in this country. And they're called Special Branch, they're called MI5, they're called Special Demonstration Squad, they're called GCHQ. They're spying on us now, not because we've done anything illegal, but because we are against big business and the state is there to protect big business. That's, that's what it comes down to. 
and you know, this is a human rights conspiracy. It's not the only time the British state has sided with big business against against workers. You know, uh, t 30 years ago it was the miners' strike where they had people, special branch, sent people in to, to destroy the miners' strike uh, and all graves. We've all seen. Uh, before that, in the 70s, you had uh, the Shrewsbury pickets who were sent to prison uh, just for, 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 for uh, picketing. Uh, and even now, 40 years after they were sent to prison, the Home Office still refuses to release the files because everybody knows that the files have got a special branch in MI5 uh, written all over it. We can go back further, back in, you know, back in the... Uh, uh, just uh, you know, it's the anniversary of the First World War and all of the uh, stuff to do with the First World War. Well, a bit of British history they don't tell us is up in Clydeside when the workers in Clydeside organised and campaigned in Clydeside. The tanks were sent in against British workers in this country, and they never tell about the tanks sent in against British workers in in George Square. Uh, and it could go further back, you know, whether we want to go to you know Tullpuddle or whether we want to go to Peterloo, when in Manchester over 200 years ago, you know, working people had a mass demonstration against cuts in wages, and the British state sent in the cavalry. The same cavalry had been sent in to uh, Waterloo and they sent it in in Manchester, in St Peter's Fields, and they murdered 19 people that day. It's a complete myth that the British state is somehow moderate, that the British state is somehow, you know, even-handed. They've always been on the side of big business against working people, and all we've done now is expose it. Do we expect Operation Hearn to uncover anything? Of course not. The police investigating the police is always going to be a whitewash. We're completely having nothing to do with it because it is a complete cover-up. You know, we know the documents are there, but despite knowing this, so far, not a single construction company, even though their directors were attending meetings for a 16-year period, even though they were spending hundreds of thousands of pounds in fees to, to this blacklisting body, apparently not a single construction company can find a single document relating to that period of blacklisting. The NETCO, the people who were actually turned, the, the undercover police unit was turning up to the, the, uh, the uh, blacklisting organisation. We have put in a freedom of information request about, you know, this the Detective Chief Inspector, uh, Chief, Detective uh, uh, Chief Inspector Golden Mills attending the meetings, and we've been told by the Metropolitan Police that not a single document <laughs> held by Netco exists. <laughs> it was all scrapped. And when that coup was abolished and, and the, the, the task was taken over and all the officers were subsumed into the Metropolitan Police, none of the documentation went over at all. This is a complete and utter cover-up. It's a cover-up like Hillsborough, it's a cover-up like Bloody Sunday, it's a cover-up like child abuse, and we will expose it. Thank you very much for listening.